Hello, my name is Dr. Michael Asala. I'm an associate professor of social work at the School of Social Work at Rutgers, the State University of New Jersey, where for the past 16 years, I've taught family therapy courses and have done research on gay and lesbian couples and families. However, before coming to Rutgers, I was a family therapist and social worker working with children and families. And it was during that time that I grew to appreciate the depth and strength of family relationships, as well as the power of the family to heal and protect. And I'm hoping that my article entitled, Condoms and Connection, Parents, Gay and Bisexual Youth and HIV Risk, helps contribute to this knowledge base. Now, according to the CDC, HIV transmission rates among gay and bisexual youth age 25 and under are skyrocketing. There is other research to strongly suggest that all too often these youth are engaging in unsafe sex. Prevention efforts targeting this population tend to be individually focused and include assertiveness training, communication skills, and peer education. However, investigators have long recognized the power of the family uh, to influence heterosexual youth to avoid risky behaviors. And prevention programs targeting these youth have been established based on these findings. But what about gay and bisexual youth? What influence, if any, do parents and parental relationships have on gay youth sexual behaviors? And to that aim, I qualitatively interviewed 38 gay and bisexual youth and at least one of their parents. What I found was that youth who claimed influence reported close parent-child relationships that provided a context for effective communication around condom use and HIV risk. Families where youth claimed no influence were distinguished by parent-child relationships that were disrupted, either by parents' mental illness, drug abuse, or parental rejection or strong disapproval for the child's sexual orientation. Almost all of the respondents talked about how they could be doing a better job discussing HIV risk with each other. And several of the parent respondents described enrolling in this study in an effort to better learn how to talk about HIV risk to their kids. Towards the end of the article, I provide case material that demonstrates how to introduce this topic in a family therapy session, and also how to get parents and kids to talk to each other about this difficult topic in ways that are effective and productive. I hope you enjoy this article, I hope you learn from it, and I welcome your comments and questions. Thank you.